Now before we begin, I'd just like to explain there are two styles of manipulation and abuse. The first one is physical, where there's actual physical contact between two or more people. And the second one is emotional manipulation. And the emotional is what we're going to concern ourselves with in this video. So what exactly is emotional manipulation? Well, the terminology which I used to describe myself is one or more person or people who takes actions which are directed towards another person or people with the aim of altering their emotional state in a negative manner. We're going to concern ourselves with three parts in this video. Part one is the language that's used to describe both parties. Two, the main technique a manipulator uses to control. And three, the most important attitude to a target's freedom. And if you're concerned about what target means, we're going to explain that in part one. Part one, the language that we use. We're going to scrap the word bully for this video and we're going to use the word manipulator. A bully has a very heavy looming feeling of somebody rampaging through a schoolyard destroying everybody in the path. Whereas if we use the word manipulator, a manipulator can only manipulate if they have techniques to control other people. If we understand those techniques, we have the power to move forward. And secondly, we're going to scrap the word victim. Anybody who classes themselves as a victim is going towards helplessness and it's a very low energy word so never class yourself as a victim or anybody else as a victim. So we're going to replace the word victim with target. If you become a target of abuse then the target just needs to understand the techniques the manipulator is using and then they become a moving target and as we all know a moving target is much harder to hit. Part two, the main techniques the manipulator uses to control. If we're gonna fully understand this section, we need to understand the fears of the target. And the number one fear of any person who's a target is, I'm scared I'm going to be rejected for. And then simply fill in the blank. And the blank can become an endless list. I'm scared I'm going to be rejected for being overweight, in financial poverty, having different coloured skin, etc, etc, etc. If a person feels self-conscious about something that they are and they fear rejection, it doesn't actually mean that they are going to get rejected, but if a person believes they are going to get rejected, they will try to hide it. And then the pressure starts to build up from prying eyes. And the target quickly develops a mindset which is, so I don't get rejected, I have to hide the fact that I am overweight, have different colored skin, have no qualifications, I've got untidy teeth or hair, I'm too weak afraid, I don't match up to other people's standards, etc, etc, etc. And the target in hiding so many things about themselves become so self-consumed they actually cannot see the wood for the trees and hence we have the manipulator's trick the manipulator's trick is extremely simple in its concept which is i'm going to tell others or personally reject you for and then they find the target's fear i'm going to tell everybody how overweight you are I'm going to prove to everyone that you're stupid because you don't have any qualifications. I'm going to show everybody how weak you are by confronting you in public. And the target, fearing everybody else seeing the way they are and believing that everybody's going to reject them for this, will start to either go into rage and start to try to control the manipulator which is again to everybody observing will notice that reaction or the target will want to hide away and avoid everything but both ways the manipulator has power over the target until the target understands what technique the manipulator is using to overpower them now the unfortunate truth is as long as the target feels rejectable in themselves about who or what they are 
and is afraid of people finding out, they will always be in risk of manipulation. We will always avoid rejection at all costs because it is a survival mechanism. So for tonight's video, I wanted to talk about um, a term called flying monkeys. And this is a fantastic term. Whoever invented this um, just should win an award. I mean, it's so clever. Whoever came up with this. Um, a flying monkey is from the movie The Wizard of Oz and it's used to describe a person that the narcissist is able to con into thinking that they are the victim and that the narcissist's real victim is actually the, um, the bad guy. So a flying monkey is created dur generally during like the devaluing stage of a narcissistic relationship. Um, in case you didn't know, there's three stages of a narcissistic relationship. There's idealize, devalue, and then discard. Um, I don't like the word idealize. I think a, a probably a better word is luring because um, they're really just sucking people in. Um, then the devaluing, so once they have the victim, then the devaluing starts. This can either be done to your face or behind your back, but it's basically um, a series of insults and put downs. Um, well, and I guess you know what though, even if it's done to your face, it's also being done behind your back because it's during this devaluing stage that the narcissist is generally lining up their next source of supply, which is um, the term narcissistic supply refers to um, their next victim. And you know what? I don't like the word victim. <laughs> no, I don't like it. I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to try really hard not to use it anymore. I am going to use the word target or um, supply because that just sounds um, more accurate and uh, victim just sounds so powerless. Even though we all are truly victims, it, I just don't like the word. Okay, so, um, so during the devaluing stage when they're lining up their next source of supply and a person, a, supply, a narcissistic supply is any like person or it can be an object too that that feeds that supplies the narcissist um that supplies their ego and they supply them in in with you know um food clothing sex shelter um money attention um, status during the devaluing stage so they're lining up the next source of narcissistic of supply um are they're involved in the church they have this whole presentation that they're this really great, you know, like this Christian man. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. And if you look at any of their actions, like none of their actions line up with any spiritual or religious belief whatsoever, but their words do, but their actions don't. That's how a narcissist works. So, okay, so the narcissists do it to um, get out of trouble. They, and they do it to protect their public image. Um, and they do it to for entertainment. Narcissists are perpetually bored, so if they can create all of this chaos and drama, and then there's people fighting over them, and they're fighting, you know, they're believing all this nonsense, and it's just all of this emotional energy. Um, it just oh, they just soak it up. It's just so gives them all this power and control. Um, over all of these people and over these situations and that's what they thrive on that's what any abuser thrives on um, is power and control and so um, really at the end of the day I think the lesson to be learned with the flying monkey stuff <laughs> is um, is to just be kind be kind to other people um, now, I'm not saying assume that somebody's lying to you but you know what <laughs> If somebody's telling you all kinds of terrible things about a total stranger, um, don't be so necessarily so quick to believe them. There's never any, you know, real reason, real legitimate reason to just be ugly. Um, you know, like the, that like they say, when you're ugly um, to somebody, it does not define them, it defines you.